Hi guys, welcome back to Tuna Tech, and today we are going to be shooting another 50% retro, 100% awesome. Who remembers this commercial? If you were colorblind and had an IQ less than 12, then you wouldn't care which portable you had. Of course, you wouldn't care if you drank from the toilet either. Game Gear. When I was young. I was super, super, super stoked for the Christmas where I would be getting the Sega Game Gear. Hey man, get portable. Get a Game Gear Supersonic Sports Pack. A color portable Game Gear, carrying case, and two hit games. Sonic 2 and the Majors Pro Baseball. Whoa, you even save 50 bucks. The Game Gear Supersonic Sports Pack. You know who makes it. Coffee? Tea? I beg my parents, I beg my parents, I beg my parents. Well, this is a little treat for you guys. This is my personal unit, and this is a Sega Game Gear. Now, what is the Sega Game Gear? The Sega Game Gear was first released in 1991. The Game Gear just retailed for $149 USD and was in direct competition with Nintendo's Game Boy, which was the best selling handheld of its time. But the Game Gear was revolutionary in the regard to the screen. It offered full color as opposed to monochrome screen on the Game Boy. What's interesting to note is that Sega was created to look actually like a Sega Genesis controller. So it's actually kind of designed to look like a Sega Genesis controller. There's different versions of this. I don't know which version I have, but there's a little bit of history with this too. This Game Gear has been slightly modified. Now in the back, I've got Mortal Kombat in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, but it's very old. And when I first pulled it out, it wouldn't work. So I looked online and it looks like these units have uh, main motherboards that some kind of liquid in the capacitors or something and over time they leak and stop working. So I found a guy who replaced the inside board so you can use it. The only downside to replacing that board is these two batteries. I think it's six AA batteries to power it for like two hours, which is ridiculous. You now have to use um, only power. So I've got an adapter, I've always had one when I was, since I was young, so it wasn't a big deal. But I'll turn it on and go through that in a little bit. But let's go a little bit more about this. So it is a 4,096 colors and had processing power higher than most of its rivals. But the cost of these innovations was battery life, like I just talked about you guys. The Game Gear required six AA batteries. It could only run for three to five hours. And in my usage when I was young, two hours. The power brick was sold as well, and it seemed to be clutch. So I've got one, I'm gonna plug it in and turn it on. Um, some additional facts, it had an 8-bit, 3.5 megahertz, 780 chip for processing. The screen is 3.2 inches on the diagonal, and it could display up to 32 colors with a frame rate roughly 60 hertz, with a resolution of 160 by 144. Basically, not good at all in today's standards. The screen is backlit in order to allow gamers to play in low light situations, some op optional accessories that came out, which I don't have a whole lot of them. The uh, TV tuner, which had a big antenna and a dial to, for uh, analog TVs, which wouldn't work today because most TV stations are digital. They had a super wide gear, which was basically a magnifying glass that made the screen bigger. They had a car gear adapter, which you could plug into a car secret lighter at the time. Now most new cars have USB ports and plugs and everything, but back in the day, you use your cigarette port for charging. And then there was a gear, there's a little thing right here, it's for, it's for the gear to gear cable that lets you just play against one another, like a multiplayer kind of thing, you connect physically to another Game Gear device. Again, while I personally love the Game Gear and remember begging my parents for this for Christmas, which I got obviously right here, it suffered from short battery life and according to the diehards and the cr critics, 
It lacked a lot of original games and had weak support from Sega. The Sega was discontinued in April of 1997. So what is this? Let me just show you a few things. So that's the Game Gear. I've had this little <laughs> bag for years. So game system, game system. This is for your, I put my um, games in there. This was for accessories, which I put the AC adapter in. And then this is for the unit. So you just slid it right in like that. Pretty unique. The only down is I don't have a whole lot of games. So going around here, there's your D-pad. You got two buttons and a start button. I'm gonna say this is for a lanyard maybe. There's little holes there. I don't know, it's been a while since I played this thing. There's your battery compartments. Like I said before, six AA batteries what required this. That's Mortal Kombat, but it's a cartridge system and who remembers blowing into cartridges. Didn't have to do too much with this. Moving around, you got your volume control, headphone jack, the cable cable system so you can multiplay, which I've never done. AC adapter and then power on, power off. Now, I will say, I just turned this on before the video. It is very dim. I don't know if it's just old or if that's how it always was. I don't remember being that dim. But like I said, this, let's see if there's a production date on this. I don't see one on here. But this is an old, old unit. And yes, the internals have been replaced, but it's still an old unit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull my AC adapter around here. And it automatically turns on. You see, you can probably see it. Maybe not. It's flickering really bad. So, but there's no cartridge in it. So I'm just gonna throw Mortal Kombat in there. I want to make sure it's turned up. Let's turn it off. Turn it back on. Ready? Let's see what happens. Like I said, I used to love this game. There's the Sega symbol. Now you guys really can't see that, can you? There's some writing on the screen. Sorry about the reflections, you guys. Let's turn it all the way up. <laughs> it's really hard to see on the camera. It says Mortal Kombat. There's some text here. I want to hear the sound. You'll hear your speaker is right here. It's taking some time here. There is no way to turn the brightness up, which I, I thought there was. There's Mortal Kombat. There you go, you can see right there. Sub-Zero. So it's easy. There you go, this is some gameplay. So that's that game. I don't have a whole lot of selection here. So obviously that's a little case it comes in. I've got Sonic 2 here. I might pop that in. And then I also got, I was a big Mortal Kombat fan. I got Mortal Kombat 2 here too. Let's, top, let's pop in this, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe it's on this one. Let me check the bottom of these. You can tell this is mine because on the back of my cartridges would be like a paint pen. I would write my initials so no one would steal them. But let's put in Sega. That's a pretty good classic. Let's see if this one works. That screen is not good. Sega! There you go. There's a Sega sound we're all used to. Now this might be for your age, but I enjoyed this game a lot. Um, I don't know how many of you guys actually remember this system. Um, but if you don't, 
you're probably too young. If you do, you're probably close to my age or older. Um, I never had a Game Boy. I never had any other portable system but this one. Nowadays, these are kind of obsolete because for one, they're hard to find. As you can see, my screen's having some issues where I've got to tilt it for it to be able to be seen. Um, but uh, I'm going to hang on to this because it's a childhood memory. In the, description, in the comments below, leave a comment. Let me know if you remember the system, if you have one, if you still have one, if you used one, and let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching. This is 50% retro or 100% awesome.